Aviation. And here it is on the roll. screaming over the airfield near the speed of sound which back then was pretty fantastic you know, it was flown by John Derry unfortunately as we watched it broke up in midair and um, crashed into the runway and a number of people who were watching spectators were killed and uh, I do remember seeing the de Havilland sorry the Hawker Hunter sitting quite close to me um, and the man at the controls uh, was staring out at his friend dying and he said to me later if I hadn't put the throttle forward then I would never have done it. But he did push the throttle forward and he gave us the full display in the Hunter As you say, the aircraft came on a long way, first to become the Sea Vixen Mark I, flying from carriers in the late 50s, early 60s, and then to the uh, Mark II, which is this variant, and this particular aircraft, XP-924, first flew in 1963. Now Simon's just bringing it, her in from the crowd centre, approaching us and pulling up to show off that beautiful plan for do a wing over to be friendly rivalry then between uh, uh, Air Force and, and uh, Fleet Air Arm. Um, it was very friendly. Well, as an ex-Commodore Joint Force Harrier, I agree with that. We're, we're partners with the Air Force and we'll be for the Fifth 35 in the future. Yeah. You know, and at the moment, the Royal Navy has got F-18 pilots for keeping their hand in at carrier operations for when that starts. And of course, an F-35, or three F-35s are in the country We'll be at Farnborough in a couple of weeks' time to uh, to show off that fantastic new aeroplane. The, 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 not the end of the story, no doubt, but a further part of the story of Navy Wings. Now Simon will be repositioning for a top pass again for the photography, and uh, he's doing a great job. We're lucky with the weather, and it should be beautiful for those photographs with just enough cloud in the background to really see the, see the plan form. Here he comes. Freddie, did you have any memorable experiences of flying the sea or the vampire? Well, it was rather an odd aircraft because it was de Havilland um, and it was very small. Uh, in fact, uh, it was the only jet we ever sent airborne that had no ejector seat. And so it was a sardonic uh, remark made in the Air Force about the vampire, which is that you can fly it or die in it. Uh, because once, uh, if you got into bad trouble, you could, you could jettison the canopy, but you couldn't get out. Um, the slipstream would shove the pilot back in, so um, he'd stay in, pinned in his seat until he hit Mother Earth. So um, uh, it was a sobering thought. <laughs> the, uh, I wonder what happened sitting with us today. <laughs> undercarriage down and she'll do a 360 just to really show off that beautiful shape and also here there's two agents two other agents Must be 
fabulous to, to see the successor to the Vampire, this wonderful airplane flying out here today. What sort of memories does that, or feelings does that give you? Well, I'm memory lane again, nostalgia, because I remember, I remember it as a, as a prototype. Uh, one of that uh, very small family of twin boom aircraft, uh, Vampire uh, and uh, Venom, Sea Venom, uh, and then of course uh, the, the successor to the Sea Venom, this one, the Sea Vixen. And of course, you'll see Vampire that uh, Winkle Brown did his first ever jet deck landing on an aircraft carrier. It's quite a wonderful one. <laughs> comes in to land. I just wanted to mention one other person and that is the benefactor of this aircraft. Uh, Julian Jones is here with us today and actually it's Julian's birthday. So happy birthday Julian. <laughs> now we've better scoot off. The aircraft's coming in in order to position ourselves uh, when he taxis in. So I'll hand you, hand you back to Ben. Well thank you very much Bill and thank you very much also to Frederick Forsyth and above all thanks to all the supporters, benefactors and so forth of the Fly Navy Heritage Trust who have done so much to keep this and other naval heritage aircraft in the air for us to enjoy. As Bill said, we'll be seeing the Sea Vixen taxiing in at Crowd Centre. ideal for carrier operations. The fact that the first two marks of Seafire didn't have folding wings, but that changed with the one we see here, the Seafire 3, which was the most numerous mark, and there's a very strong local connection quite apart from the fleet air arm, because most of them were built by the Westland Company. squadron on HMS Indefatigable flown by Sub-Lieutenant Jerry Spud Murphy on a mission to provide cover for Fleet Air Arm Grumman Avenger and Fairy Firefly strike aircraft that were attacking a Japanese airfield scored the last enemy aircraft killed of the whole of World War II when it downed a pair of Mitsubishi A6M Zeros on the 15th of August 1945. Offensive sweeps over Japanese air bases. Mark that's part of our static display. The swordfish will be joining it there later. But our next display item is sticking with the naval theme, of course. It's the Royal Navy Raiders parachute team, and Lieutenant Commander Todd Wilson is ready shortly to commence commentary on them. 